structure and in terms of rhythm. G'day, and welcome to episode 9 of The Art of Spiral Life, part 2. Today, I'll focus on the topic of instrument separation. I'll be working on creating a lead riff that follows along with the rhythm of the bass line. I'm using a MIDI clip that I prepared earlier so that we can get straight to the point. But it might need a few tweaks along the way, but for now it's close enough. I want to make sure that the amp envelope is set perfectly. I'm going to need to have a different release time value for the different length notes I need, and I'm going to manage this with the timbre module. Down here on the left in Bitwig's piano roll, you can choose to set certain timbre values for each note. Much like velocity, you can assign this value to any parameter. As you can see, I've already patched the timbre module to a modulator out, which allows the timbre values in the piano roll to be assigned to the envelope's release time. Using an oscilloscope, it'll help me see if the release time is too long. I want it really tight and clean. I want staccato notes. So I can't allow these release times to overlap into the attack of the following notes. Now I'm just setting up Pro Q3 to visualize the bass line at the same time as the lead. That way I can easily see how the overtones of each instrument are interacting. Let's just soften the attack of the envelope a bit. Then we can begin to play with the parameters of the phase distortion oscillator to start finding a good tone to work with. It's usually a good idea to high pass frequencies below and around 200 to 300 hertz because these tend to lead to a muddy sound when interacting with a bass line. I want to find the sweet spot though because it's not necessary always to completely remove it. The particular setting that I choose, the frequency cutoff point, will probably change a little bit as, as we progress because the oscillator will start to influence the level of the overtones. Right now I'm just getting a feel for what wave shape is best and what volume is a good place to begin before I add another modulating oscillator. And that's where the fun really will begin. Now I'll grab another phase 1 oscillator and patch the output to the phase modulation input of the carrier oscillator and I'll just change the colours here too. Now while I'm experimenting with the modulation depth and the waveform options, I'll be paying close attention to how the sound appears on the spectrum analyzer. I'm ultimately looking for a tone that sounds nice but also doesn't depend too much on the lower harmonics or the fundamental in order to sound deep, full and aggressive. I also don't want there to be a hole or a lack of volume in any of that lower mid range band between 200 up to 500. I want it to sound and appear full as well as not have too much volume around the fundamental. I think some of the MIDI notes could be a little bit more staccato, so I'll just make a few adjustments here. And 
also, I think I want to remove the MIDI note that coincides with the kick drum. I think the riff will sound more groovy that way, but also leave room for the kick to be in the spotlight. All in the interest of separation, we want this riff to sound as large and fat as possible without interfering with anything else. We're doing that by paying attention to the overtones and also the rhythm itself. exactly where we need them to be to avoid muddiness. I think there's a lot of nice tones that we can potentially use as a starting point for this lead. Ooh, that's a pretty good one. I want to adjust these staccato notes to make the first of the 30 second notes even shorter in release time. And it'd be nice to hear this one a little longer on the end as well. Just playing with the shape of the modulating oscillator now is giving me a good idea of what it will sound like later when I automate this over 8 or 16 bars. Really looking forward to that. Okay, now let's look at another step we can take towards the goal of separation from the bass line. I'm going to use panning to move the notes of the lead out of the dead centre on the stereo image. Since the bass is right down the centre, moving the lead from left to right will make space for both parts to coexist. The goal that I have in mind is for each MIDI note of the lead riff to be randomly positioned in the stereo field. So firstly I need a source of randomness. I'll find that here in the random category of modules. White noise is typically used for this job because noise is essentially random frequencies at a really fast rate. Then I'll need to sample that noise every time a MIDI note is played. For that I'll need a sample and hold module. I'll need the noise to be patched into a modulator out module. Now I can assign the random noise values to the panning. Then, by going to the search bar, I can find the sample and hold module. Let's connect that between these two modules. And the last step to building this little sample and hold panning section is to add a module that receives the incoming gate signals from the MIDI notes on the piano roll. As you can see in the help view, this yellow input with the upward pointing arrow is where we will be patching the gates to. Anywhere that you see one of those yellow arrows pointing up is an input that takes gates or triggers. Notice that the envelope has a yellow input with a different symbol representing that incoming gates can be patched here too, which are typically from notes within a MIDI clip. A gate patched into the yellow input of an oscillator will re-trigger the phase of the waveform, which can be essential for clean and consistent sounds such as a Psytrance bass pluck or tight and sharp leads like the one we're working on today. So now when I patch this gate module into the sample and hold, each new MIDI note will tell it to sample whatever random frequency that the noise module happens to be producing at that precise moment. It then holds the frequency until the next gate. 
This random value is then sent to the modulator out, which is assigned to the pan position. Using an oscilloscope, we can visualise the values produced by the noise module and the sample and hold module. The oscilloscope takes two inputs, so I'll put the noise directly into the top input and then the sample and hold into the bottom so you can see exactly what's happening. That brings us to the end of this episode of The Art of Spiral Life. I hope that you are inspired to experiment with these techniques for creating separation between instruments in your mix. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good one. See you next time. Cheers.